I am optimistic that there's going to be therapeutics and or vaccines that are going to mitigate this disease certainly a lot sooner than the doom and gloomers have led us to believe, I mean, two years, three years, four years. Uh, uh, in, in the way that by the third quarter, we might know how to treat this disease enough to sharply lower the death rate, uh, make it into a bad flu. And as we know, there's been really some startling developments of uh, second uh, stage trials by firms that have, are now taking place, third stage trials for uh, June scheduled. I mean, this is absolutely astounding. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, it is true that all of these could prove barren and, and none of these could work, but the odds are that we're going to have a lot of mitigating therapeutics. Secondly, the support by the Federal Reserve and the federal government has been unprecedented of, of, of the magnitude that in many ways far exceeds the financial crisis, which was the worst recession since uh, the Great Depression. Uh, and I, I believe that the liquidity that has been provided into the economy uh, once uh, confidence begins to return and we open up, is going to make for a very strong 2021. Exactly when is it going to begin? It depends on, again, progress against the, the virus, whether it returns in October. There are a lot of unknowns, but I believe by fourth quarter and 2021, we're going to be surprised on how fast the comeback is in our economic activities. I love economic data. I look at it uh, like a hawk. But very honestly, it, it hasn't interested me that much. I know what has happened. Um, I knew this was going to be a, a horrible record-breaking uh, employment report that we, that we just uh, experienced. This is all the rear view mirror. Actually, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is look at the virus statistics. Europe is six, seven hours ahead of us. They've already collected the news. What trends are happening there? What's going on on the vaccine therapeutic front? That, to me, is, is, is far more informative on what's going to happen to the economy and the financial markets going forward than looking at durable goods <laughs> three weeks ago. Another thing I look at, I look at what's happening to the states uh, that, that are opening up more aggressively than, than other states. Uh, uh, that, and, and I look at countries in Europe that have opened up in a great degree. And we, you know, Sweden, of course, is like the canary in the, go, in the coal mine, uh, uh, you know, never locking down, but still uh, observing social distancing uh, 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 rules. How, how are cases there? The, these are all natural experiments. Um, Florida, uh, at this point, has less, it's early, but has less cases than was expected, given that the governor shut down late. What, what, does, that, what does that mean? California, not nearly as many. Uh, it did get to Washington State, but, you know, Cuomo, he was right when he said it came from Europe. Everyone thought that this virus was coming from China. Very little of it in the United States came from China. Almost all of it came from Europe. We had 2 million people come from Europe between January and March, and they seeded it in, in New York, and that's why that's the hot spot. And then it jumped everywhere there. But, but every one of these states, every one of these different countries is itself a, a laboratory that we could look at to give us a clue about how this virus spreads and, and what the outcome is going to be. Way early, before we knew what was going to happen, but feared for the worst, 
I made the following point. I said that stocks are long-term assets where over 90% of their value is due to earnings more than 12 months in the future. So in other words, even if you wipe out 100% of their next 12 months earnings, but you say it'll go back to something like normal after that, that leads to a uh, you know, 8% decline, 9%. You can just go through the math. It's, it's, it's just a simple present value formulation. Um, so if we do recover, we shouldn't go down as much as earnings this year, anywhere near, even if earnings slump 40%. I don't even think it's gonna be that bad. Um, so again, because they're long lived assets, I think that is, one one of the important factors. Second factor is the fact that we have created unprecedented liquidity. I mean, the Fed came in full force. The government's transfer programs and in, in not only PPP, but tax rebates um, uh, uh, and, and uh, enhanced unemployment insurance, and we can go on and on and on, is unprecedented. This is putting trillions of dollars into the pockets of consumers and businesses. I, I, I look at the monetary statistics, I'm astounded. They are jumping so much faster than they did in, in, the, in the financial crisis. Um, yeah. This, and, and I think markets are, are smart. I think, I think the stock market is looking at this and say, whoa, this is a big push. When we come back, when there's a little more confidence in there, and people start saying, you know, hey, you know, there's some treatments, not as bad, we don't have a vaccine yet, but, but, but we may be very surprised on how strong demand increases. When we look back, those March lows of less than a little half a percent of the 10 year um, is going to be the lowest in decades, if not generations. I think interest rates are gonna start rising not the Fed interest rate. The Fed is gonna stay low for a long time. But I think all this liquidity is going to cause us some inflation. And I think bond are gonna say, whoa, whoa, strong economy, more inflation. I'm not gonna take half a percent. I'm not gonna take one, one and a half. Then they go to two, then they go to two and a half, then they go to three, three and a half. I think we're gonna see a rise like that. And I think it's gonna go over 2021, 22. We're going to see a rise in those long-term rates, not, not extreme, still moderate by post-war standards, but certainly a definitive change in direction.